In this video, we will show you our dining room makeover and highlight the design elements, materials, furniture, and decor that we chose to transform the room from this to this. Here we go. John and Megan here, and we are currently in our dining room, and a year ago, this room looked a lot different than it does right now. That's right, this room has always had good bones. 11 foot high ceilings, three large arched windows, a fireplace, and wood floor. However, it still felt cold and fell a little flat. Yeah, definitely not something we wanted to showcase as soon as people stepped through the front door. We try to prioritize our renos based on areas that we use the most. And believe it or not, we use our dining room a lot. We do, which is why we chose to do a full makeover on this room. And in this video, we will be going through the various elements in this space, including the fireplace, molding, paint color, furniture, lighting, window treatments, mirror, and art. Whew. Well, lot. and also make sure to stick around to the end too because we threw in a couple of bloopers. For the sconces, we decided on the TT <laughs> <laughs> They are always fun to watch. From the start, we knew the fireplace should be the focal point of the room. The problem was scale, and the original fireplace mantle and surround were just too small for this space. Yeah, it was also made of cheap MDF, and the marble hearth was cracking in several places. We decided that this would be where we spent most of our money, and we opted to we opted to have a custom cast stone fireplace package made for this room. We were lucky enough to be introduced to Larry at Omega Mantles, who was amazing to work with. Uh, and he introduced us to all the different styles, colors, and finishes to choose from. And believe me, there are a ton. There are so many. We decided to get their model 1110.557, which we'll just put up here on the yeah. screen. Um, and it's from their Seamless series. We chose the pearl color in a honed finish to get the look that we wanted. And with the help of Larry, we modified the various components of the fireplace surround, like the hearth, the supports, the inset, and the mantle. And if you don't know what those are, Larry will help you. But to basically match both the firebox dimensions and the desired height that we needed the new unit to be. We also went for the one piece surround instead of the three piece so that it was a seamless finish. And we also opted for the larger hearth to give this unit the proper base it needed. This arrived on a very large pallet and the installation process went fairly smooth. We first had to cut the wood floor to enlarge the area for the hearth and we applied a self leveler uh, to make sure that the concrete pad and the subfloor were level. With the help of a friend and our local chimney crew, we were able to lift all the sections into place and secure them to the wall. They were heavy. Yes, they were. Uh, the fireplace kit also came with matching grout, so we mixed that together and filled all the seams where stone met stone with that matching grout. For areas where the stone met the wall, we used a high quality caulk to fill the gaps. For the sconces, we had a happy accident when we realized that we could not install junction boxes above the fireplace because one of the locations was directly in front of the cinder block chimney. This was the perfect opportunity to put on our problem solving hats. And we came up with a unique way to solve the problem. That's right, we bumped out the top section of the fireplace a few inches. This gave us enough room to add the wiring and outlet boxes for the sconces. While it did cost us more time and materials, this was one of the best things that could have happened to the space. By building it out, it added depth and it highlights the fireplace even more. And we now can fit sconces, which we'll talk about later in this video. The molding in this room is something we waffled on for weeks. Yeah, the room had a fair bit of molding already, but we wanted a design that was a little more modern. We removed the existing molding and then installed chair rail and larger boxes above and below, all using the same profile. These changes created a clean yet classic look to our dining room walls and created a tremendous amount of visual interest and depth. We kept the crown molding, but had to remove it and reinstall it on the fireplace wall to accommodate the bump out that we constructed. That's right, and while the crown molding stayed the same, we decided to add one little small piece of trim on the ceiling to really draw your eyes up. And it did. Eyes up, straight to the ceiling. It's true. We also added our custom two-piece baseboard to the dining room. This is something we added to the rest of our first floor when we moved in, and after we refinished our floors. And we wanted to keep it consistent in this room as well. For the paint in this room, we wanted to choose a color that was both inviting, yet intimate and luxurious. 
We also wanted it to be dark enough that you knew it was different from the white walls in the rest of our first floor, but not too dark and not too moody. After a number of samples, we settled on the color Collingwood by Benjamin Moore. To us, it was the perfect mid-tone grayish. We applied a primer to all the walls and the ceiling first using our Graco X7 paint sprayer. We then applied two coats of flat white to the ceiling. We also hopped on the monochromatic trend that we have been drooling over. And what this means is that we painted the walls and all of the molding, including our windows, to give the space a modern yet timeless look. We needed furniture and decor to complement the new look of our dining room. The first piece we ordered was the dining room table. We originally used the table from our old house and while it was in great shape and we still love it, it was just too small for this space. We went with the Jason dining table in the 107 inch length. The angled lines on the legs are very unique and the ember finish gives a nice pop of contrast in the space. We are not too keen on the zebra pattern on this finish, but overall we love the larger table for this space. For the dining chairs, we decided to keep our original set. They're the Bennett Parsons dining chairs from Restoration Hardware in the sand Belgian linen finish. We love the straight lines on the back that are softened by the tufting detail, not to mention they are also comfortable. We originally had six, so we purchased two additional chairs to add to our current set. So now we can seat eight people. It's fast math. For the buffet, we don't really have fine china, but we wanted a piece of furniture to store serving platters and use it to display food or desserts when hosting. We absolutely fell in love with the Luciano or Luciano, we'll say Luciano buffet from our house. The rich wood color and the beautiful lines balance both classic and contemporary. A piece of furniture we did not originally intend to buy was an accent table. But after looking at the renders, we realized it would be nice to have an additional accent table in the corner to display a vase or greenery and just really fill that area. We decided on the Santos side table from McGee & Co. The rich wood is gorgeous in person and it was the perfect size for the corner we put it in. But we definitely recommend putting this beautiful table in any corner of your home. For the rug, we wanted a neutral tone with a subtle yet classic pattern. We went with the Albuquerque area rug from Boutique Rugs, which has the perfect blend of light gray, light beige, and charcoal colors. It's a medium pile in a traditional pattern. The rug feels really high end and is very soft to walk on. The dining room lighting is something we discussed quite often and we needed to ensure we had proper lighting in all the key areas. For the chandelier, we wanted something that was a great blend of classic and contemporary. Yeah, the Jane Offset Chandelier by Visual Comfort was the perfect size, spanning a good four feet in length, and even though it has clean right angles, it still carries a traditional look with its classic white shades. For the sconces, we decided on the Double T Sconce by Visual Comfort and a hand-rubbed antique brass. It is a timeless design, and we like that it didn't have shades that would compete with the shades on the chandelier. For the window treatments, we originally purchased the same linen curtains that we have in our breakfast room, which we've talked about mm -hmm. because we love them so much. However, we wanted a more luxurious look for the dining room, and we felt like velvet curtains would give us that high-end look that we're trying to achieve. It was a little bit of a challenge to find off-the-rack velvet curtains in the color and length that we needed, but we managed to find the perfect panels by Half Price Drapes on Amazon. These are in the color Cool Beige, and the 120 inch length span our 11 foot walls perfectly. And these brass curtain rods from Target are sturdy enough to handle the weight of the velvet. Be sure to check out our favorite curtains and drapes guide that you can download for free using the link in the description. Selecting the art for this room was really challenging for us. Yeah, we went back and forth on what type of artwork we wanted. Then we focused mainly on the color palette we wanted and researched all the genres from there. We came across Autumn Hills by James McCallan and purchased it in the knife gel finish. For the mirror, we knew we wanted a large and oversized mirror to make a big impact in this room. Since the ceilings in this room are 11 feet tall, we started looking at floor mirrors instead of wall mirrors and found the Emmy Brass Floor Mirror from Crate and Barrel. This mirror is a beast, so make sure you securely anchor it to the wall to avoid it falling down. Yes. Overall, this project was a first for a lot of things. 
First time replacing a fireplace, first time doing monochromatic paint, first time adding molding on the ceiling. It was also one of the first projects we have done for our house where we used SketchUp extensively before anything was purchased. This helped out tremendously. We could determine the right size and scale for the furniture, compare different molding patterns and sizes, and swap out our pieces to see which ones we liked the best. We are thrilled with how this project came out and love using the space now for family dinners. And our new puppy Slinky seems to like it as well. What's your favorite part of this room? Let us know in the comments section below. Also, please make sure to hit that thumbs up button to like this video and click the subscribe button to stay up to date on our channel. Are you ready for some bloopers? Too bad. We did this all in one take and we don't have any. In this video, we will show you our dining room makeover. <laughs> We are off to a good start. Here we go. <laughs> and a year ago, it looked much different than it looks right now. I mean. Sorry. <laughs> you see what I have to work with here, people. <laughs> Large arched windows, a fireplace, and a wood floor. However, it still felt Yeah, freedom. sorry. I, no, no, that's okay. I thought that was my line. Do you see what I'm working with here? <laughs> <laughs> that is correct. This room has always had good bones. 11 foot high ceilings. I lost my spot. <laughs> <laughs> and make sure to stick around to the end. <laughs> Elements in this space, including the fireplace, molding, paint color, furniture, lighting, window treatments, mirror, and art. <laughs> And <laughs> stick around to the end too, because we threw in a blooper reel. Oh. We, don't, we don't have bloopers, do we? <laughs> oh goodness. Do we like the hand thing or no? Probably not. Really? Sorry. <laughs> I think this is, this is money, right? <laughs> this is it. This is going to seal the deal. <laughs> People are going to stay tuned in because <laughs> of my finger Because your hand counting. gestures, yep. All right, here we go. Let me snot my nose. No, you're good. Thanks. <laughs> oh my gosh. What? So gross. That's right, there are a lot, and shout out to Larry. <clears throat> you shouting out now? I don't what up, Larry? <laughs> We also had a happy accident. Not when... like the accident Slinky has. <laughs> now you gotta warn me. <laughs> Why? Like that was aggressive. It's so much better. It's so aggressive. When I surprise you with those. Oh my gosh, threw me off. All right. <laughs> For the sconces, we also, oops. For the, uh, yep. Could not install junction boxes for sconces. Oh, I don't like how this sconces. Good luck reading this part I again. Know. This was the perfect opportunity to put on our problem solving hats. Mine's stuck. <laughs> <laughs> this was the perfect. <coughs> <laughs> and we came up with a unique way to solve the problem. We bumped out the section <laughs> of the fireplace. Oh we came up with a unique way to solve the problem. We bumped out the top section of the fireplace a few inches. Why don't you move your mouth? <laughs> That was my line. No, you said, you told me to go to inches. And we came up with a unique way to solve the problem. We found that. <laughs> the molding in this room is something we waffled on. <laughs> Sorry. Are you ready to rumble? <laughs> we kept the crown molding, but had to remove it. We like, had I, it. I got this. We had I it. got this. A small piece of trim to the ceiling to really draw your eyes up. That's right, and it did. <laughs> <laughs> we also added our own custom two-piece baseboard to the dining room. <laughs> <laughs> this is something we added to the rest of our first floor when we moved in, and we wanted to keep it consistent throughout this room. <laughs> this is something we added to the rest of our first floor. Wait, did you just... This is something we added to the rest of our first floor after we refinished our red oak to look like white oak. 
This is something we added to the rest of our, I don't know. What, <laughs> <laughs> what did she just say? <laughs> This custom baseboard is something we added to the entire first floor when we moved in after we re refinished them to... <laughs> <laughs> right? I know, okay. Well. This custom baseboard we added to the rest of... <laughs> this baseboard, man, seriously. Sit. Good boy, down. Yeah, we absolutely fell in love with the Luci Luciano. Luciano. <laughs> Luciano, Luciano. Luci, Lucy. Love the, yeah, okay, sorry. For the buffet, we don't really love, oh. We <laughs> For the sconces, we decided on the TT. <laughs> oh, the TTs. What do I say? The, the double T. The, the, okay, sorry. For the sconces, we decided. <laughs> I know it's coming. I know it's coming. That's the problem. Okay. This mirror is a beast, so make sure you securely anchor it to the wall to avoid it falling down. Yes. Yes. <laughs> if you like this video, you are going to love the one right over there. So click that button and check it out. <laughs>